Welcome to week four of the Streaming 101 podcast. Today we are discussing with uh, software with once again yeah. Professor Roman and I. And yeah. Yay! We're going to do this stuff. Yep. This great. We're going to do stuff. We're both a little tired. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. So we're both tired. But we're here anyways. Did I just blow my nose with a napkin? Does it matter? I mean. Yeah. You blow your nose anything. Napkins are great things to blow your nose with, though. It's like don't. It's like don't be surprised. Yeah, it's perfect. Things have multiple uses, much like software. Ha. Huh. Segway. Um, Segway. So today we're going to be discussing basically the ins and outs of uh, first stuff when we start everything that we personally use for software, um, oh, our um, experiences with the ever changingness of the software. As well as, you know, what's worked, what hasn't, uh, everything kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So and then we'll get to the huge Q&A section. Yeah. End, which is actually only five questions. I tweeted earlier. It, but really, everyone yeah. Everyone had the same five questions. Yeah. I mean, it was in my feed, too. I didn't see a lot of different. Like, they were phrased differently. But yeah, yeah. honestly, it's, it, it, yeah, it isn't that bad. It, it's, I feel like it's everyone has the same yeah. kind of mentality of what they don't know about yeah, things exactly. so it's just kind of pretty far reaching mm -hmm. so uh first off uh from last week once again thank you to uh brotato and tiger writer if you guys did not see that episode i would highly recommend it it was uh, really fun yeah. really enjoyed it really good week it gives you it, even if you're not a, even if you don't plan on ever streaming i feel like it gives you a really good insight on how we all feel about things Definitely. so if anything it's just a cool uh listen if you like you know, streaming stuff like Twitch. Um, so when you first start broadcasting, uh, you need a few things. We discussed this on uh, week one for like basics, but exactly. the first thing you need is a broadcasting software and a stream key. Um, yeah. Those are two things you need. That that can go to a stream key for Twitch, uh, Hitbox, you know, wherever you stream from, um, you need basically this big long stream information you can plug into a software that basically says, uh, this is your door to you, uh, your profile on whatever website you're streaming to. Um, and then you plug that into whatever streaming software. Now, for streaming software, uh, I use OBS. I have personally never used XSplit. Uh, have uh, you ever used XSplit? Yes. So that, that's, okay, then you please talk, because I have absolutely yeah, no okay, idea so what to talk about. primary broadcasting platforms. Um, there is OBS and there is XSplit. Uh, they are, for all intensive purposes, pretty much the same until you get into the nitty gritty things. Um, XSplit is a little bit more fully featured currently uh, in that it has a few things that don't come natively with OBS. Primarily, uh, you can do screen editing previews. So like right now, T-Rex and I, we have this overlay, right? Well, let's say he wanted to set up another overlay while this was going on. There wouldn't be any way for him to keep this up because he's using OBS. Keep this up while he edited and he did editing on another scene. Um, you can do that in XSplit. You cannot do that yet in OBS. Um, uh, there's smoother screen transitions, even though now uh, there is a screen transitioning plugin, I believe, for OBS. I have yet to figure that out. I've seen it, but it, it, seen it, it's around, so that's, that's not necessarily one of the huge differences anymore. Um, and other than that, that's, that's, I mean, that's really about it. Um, that's really about it. So um, I would say... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say that if you're just starting out, um, use OBS. I, I mean, I recommend it for everything. One, it's free to get all the features on XSplit. You have to buy them. Uh, you have to buy the fully featured version of XSplit. And at this point, OBS is so far along that you really don't need, in my opinion, to worry about too many things of the differences. And like T-Rex and I talked about on all the broadcasts, there are such, there's such a thing as over-investing. And paying for <laughs> streaming software when you could get one that is equally good for free, I would consider over investing. Especially when, like, yeah, when you're starting out, investing um, anything, period, is like go for at least when it regards to things that aren't absolutely necessary, uh, like to have like a good quality kind of thing, because it depends on you know what you personally yeah. want. But yeah, for sure, I know there's a lot of broadcasters that that stick and they love with XSplit. You know, that's 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 their bread and butter. It's what they prefer to use. They hate OBS and stuff like that. Um, 
I know for uh, myself that I, I've, like I said, I'd never used XSplit, so I really can't speak to the two at all. So you're gonna have to listen to yeah, what he yeah, said yeah. to kind of I mean, give like, you the uh, best idea. My, my first, my first two months, I streamed with XSplit <laughs> because I had to stream with XSplit because we were using the Hophog capture thing. Yeah, and OBS didn't properly capture this Windows changes and visual. It was a huge mess. I remember when I was using the HD PVR, I had to capture it off of the software capture that was for the Hopog. Like you, you would begin like recording, and then you would capture yeah. the window of the recording. That's how I had to do it for the longest yeah. time, which is really awful. Um, so, how to use? Since we're honestly going to be talking majority about uh, OBS usage, right, that's yeah, gotta be what we're talking about. Uh, if you want to learn about XSplit, sadly, we're not going to be the ones to tell you. Um, so, when you when you download OBS, uh, first off, I would recommend always keeping it updated, um, just in case there's bug fixes, just in case there's also new features. Like, uh, is it? It doesn't. Does the CLR browser come free now? Is that uh, built is, in? Well, yeah, it's free, but it's not included. You have to. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I meant. Sorry. Meant. Yeah. Okay. So it's still. Uh, it's still. A, <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Okay. That, that's when things start to get confused. I didn't remember. Yeah. Okay. So with OBS, you're going to have uh, a whole bunch of buttons. So on the bottom, which is what you're going to be using for the most part uh, when you open up OBS, is there's going to be two boxes, uh, two, I guess you could say, uh, linear graphs. What would you call those? I guess like cell tower looking images, one yeah. for your microphone and one for your general audio. Um, below those, basically a, uh, a meter. It goes up and down depending on the amount of audio being pushed through your mic or your uh, desktop, all that kind of stuff. And then eight other buttons. Uh, the first big box on the bottom left-ish part of the OBS screen is scenes. That yeah. is basically the amalgamation of every single thing you are capturing and using yeah. for something. So, for so example... You can have a bunch of different scenes. Like yeah. For me and T-Rex, like we both have an intro screen, a standard game screen, I would assume. Um, and an outro screen. Yep. So if you want an example, uh, this is the hold screen I use. It can also change uh, for breaking, all that kind of stuff, like for I take a break, I end the stream, all that kind of stuff. And I just select the scene for that, and it changes all the capture options immediately, which are called sources. It changes all the sources at once, and then I can easily switch back to what I have, something called labeled as podcast, which has my capture the overlays, and then I have Ben's capture. Um, and then, of course, I could have very basic uh, gameplay for when I'm playing stuff like this. It's all, once you all get it all set up, ideally, you will rarely ever touch it again. Yeah. So that's why you, I feel like people think that they're never going to be experts is because they're not actively always dealing with it. Um, you know, you're not always thinking about what's my keyframe interval i didn't reset that today like those a lot of the features now are automatically implemented uh they yeah. weren't originally which was frustrating yeah 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 to stream on twitch i know that uh that was was that a big thing did they because they forced keyframe intervals right and you had to like go on obs okay. and change it yourself so <clears throat> to kind of take a journey through broadcasting twitch twitch changes its uh requirements for what it will receive occasionally and so the big thing that was changed, and this was one of the questions that was asked on Twitter, is what the fuck is a keyframe interval? So a keyframe interval is essentially information that your broadcast sends uh, so that uh, Twitch knows how to grab it and sync up the little bits of video that it's broadcasting. So the keyframe interval that used to work was pretty much anything. You set it to audio and then Twitch did all the hard muscle of figuring out how to sync your stream up. And now you're supposed to set it to two. Uh, which means every two seconds, you're going to send one frame to Twitch that has a mark on it. It's a keyframe so that Twitch knows where to keep everything in yeah. order. It keeps things synced. It keeps things synced. So basically, you know, you don't need to understand what a keyframe is. You just need to know that if you're streaming on Twitch, it's two. Yeah. Um, Imagine like a metronome. It keeps your stream on yeah. beat. If it didn't exist, then you'd be pretty fucked. Uh, you'd be really offbeat. People be yelling at you. Why is your mouth not moving when you're talking? Or why is it all that kind of exactly. stuff? Exactly. Um, um, and this is a really good point. Uh, I don't know why I didn't say this before, but uh, Echo Bob said that uh, it'd be a great idea to download and have OBS open in front of you, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah, if we if you have OBS open while we're talking about this, you'll that's be able great. To see everything. It's it's yep. a quick download, and you're able to look at it. Yep. Um. So yeah. 
so when you're when you're when you're looking at OBS, uh, you have you know your settings page, and settings is kind of where you're going to learn, and it's and it's similar on XSplit. Like you know, it's not going to be the exact mm -hmm. same layout, okay, on XSplit as it is on OBS. There are some standard things that are good to know about pretty much anyone of any broadcasting software that you're using. Um, uh, so uh, in my mind, the big three to hit anytime you're you're getting set up for a broadcast. I even check these before I start broadcasting every day is your encoding, your video, and your audio. Um, so your encoding is essentially um, the bit, it's going to contain the bit rate that you're streaming at, what encoder that you're using, which everyone's probably gonna use the same encoder. Um, uh, and, you know, like audio codec and bit rate. Everything on your encoding side, other than your maximum bit rate. Um, and, much, your, and your buffer size too. I used a custom yeah. buffer size. Well, yeah, if you, if you, yeah, we can get into that in a second. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, everything on your encoding, the only thing you really need to worry about messing with when you're starting your broadcast is your bit rate. Um, a lot of different people talk about different broadcasting bit rates. Uh, if you're not partnered on Twitch, uh, I would recommend broadcasting in 2,000 uh, kilobytes a second. If you are partnered, yeah, I would recommend using the maximum, which is 3,500 kilobytes a second. So T-Rex can tackle video. Sure. So video is pretty simple. Um, what you have here is what you are uh, capturing at, essentially. So right now, uh, my base resolution is 920 by 1080. I'm always capturing at 1080 all the time. Uh, because that way, if I ever do use 1080, it's, it's, it's not going to be a problem of any kind of sorts. Um, I actually think it's funny thing is, whenever I have this window open, I think my frame rate for my camera goes down. Just because it's awesome. like... Well, it's just because like OBS is so like right now I have so many things pouring into it that whenever I have OBS doing more yeah. than one thing, it just like really starts to struggle. Um, but basically, I always capture a 1080. But then you have your resolution downscale, your filter, and your frames per second, and then disable arrow. Which that's I mean personally, I have I yeah. disable it, but it's it's more or less whatever. Um, so the reason why I capture in 1080 is so that way if I ever stream a game in 1080, uh, it's just everything is the same. I'm in 1080, so is the game. It's it, Whenever you have things in different formats and then downscale all of them, things can kind of look strange sometimes. That was a conversation I had when I was getting my graphics made. It was very, uh, it was very important. They asked me, what do you capture in and what do you downscale in? So that way they know what the process looks like when the things are being uh, done for you. Yeah. So I, I downscaled a 720, and you may ask, why would you download downscale a 720 when you can stream into ADP and your computer's strong enough, all that kind of stuff? It's so that way people can watch it on source basically all the time for most people who have okay internet. It's the, the moment you, you upgrade your stream's quality is also the moment you potentially can lower the amount of people who have access to it on, on a good quality setting. Which is exactly, uh, Stoutsy asked this, that's exactly why if you're not partner, we recommend streaming in a lower bit rate because more people are going to have access mm -hmm. to the stream. Yep. Because that is a bit rate that is easier for people to access. Yes. Um, especially if you don't have quality options. That's like the biggest thing. If, you, if they can't, if they only have one option, then, then they can't, they just, some just can't watch you, you know? Meanwhile, if you're watching myself or Broman, uh, we have quality options. So if there's a problem with me, you know, you can just put me on low or medium and you could probably still watch just fine. All that kind of stuff. Um, also, on top of that, uh, we didn't mention this, but also uh, we, there's also broadcast settings, which uh, the broadcast settings, which is your third drop down in your settings menu area. Uh, you have who you stream to. So we have, I have Twitch selected. Your FMS URL is basically just what server you're, you're, you're going to. So I would suggest picking the one closest to you if you can. Yep. Uh, but keep in mind to pick a couple ones in case one is having a problem. You can immediately just, you know, yeah. switch it over. It's good to know if you can work with multiple servers. Yeah. I do like Dallas and Virginia are like my two, my two go-tos. Yeah. Um, and then you have uh, the play path slash stream key, if any. Because uh, sometimes you can use OBS just to do local recording. Um, mm -hmm. And that is where you're going to plug in your massive stream key, which you get from Twitch. That, that's, that's an easy find. Mm -hmm. um, you can even Google the Twitch stream key, and I'm sure yeah, it'll probably it'll bring you to that web page, and you yeah. sign in, and you click the button. I can't show you because I don't want to give you my you stream key, obviously. It's straight from your dashboard. It'll say yep. stream key. Yep. Um, and you just copy and paste that. Do you want to tackle the audio? Sure. 
Uh, audio is a lot simpler. Uh, you basically will be able to pick your desktop audio device and your microphone device. Uh, you know, if you have specific things that you use for those, make sure to specify them. Like my, my desktop audio is always set to default, but yeah. my microphone is always set to this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then below that, you'll have push to talk, which I don't know why you would use push to talk if you're broadcasting. Um, and you'll have two items below that that are actually, um, they're actually really important. Uh, and it can help you solve a lot of audio problems when you start streaming. It says desktop boost or mic audio boost. Oh, so what yeah. this is uh, both of these things increase via a multiple, a base multiple of one. Uh, the total sound available is the way I like to think about it for your broadcast. So uh, for a lot of people, when they start broadcasting, they'll say, you know, my microphone comes across fine, but my desktop audio, I have everything maxed out and it's not even hitting 25%. What do I do? This is when you come into the desktop audio boost. Um, when I used to broadcast off my old uh, desktop, I had to set my audio boost up to two and two turned it into like blow your speakers out loud. And then I could scale everything back to like 20% so that I have an I So basically like giving yourself more sound to work with, it's sort of like a game control for your entire device. Giving yourself more sound to work with is gonna make it possible for you if everything's maxed out. Um, to be able to produce, you know, actual quality sound and stuff, because that's something that I had a huge problem with in the beginning is, is like you max everything out. I don't know what to do. This was the first place I would come. To yeah. That little bit of troubleshooting there for you guys. You huh? tell me about that too. That was very yeah. important for me when I was first starting out because I, I did, I had that exact problem pretty much. Uh, OBS is also enabled with a noise gate. I recommend trying to stay away from the noise gate because the noise gate on OBS is not super clean. No noise gate. No noise gate is really clean. Yeah, but uh, it, it pops really hard when it opens. No matter yeah. what. Uh, so no matter. What, and this is for noise gates. Software noise gates, kind of all across the board. When they open in the software, it makes like a or like a sound, and people will hear that over and over again. They're like, "Can you stop that?" Yeah. Can you? I think stop it's because it probably turns on the audio device. So yeah, it's exactly. Here. It's turning on the audio device. Yeah. Which, which creates a sound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is kind of a quick rundown of all of that stuff. Uh, so to kind of answer some questions about downscaling, um, <laughs> the point of downscaling for me, it does it does two things. One, obviously, you want to broadcast in a in a resolution that's easy to see, a resolution that fits inside of your bandwidth. So like broadcasting 1080p over over 3500 kilobytes a second is not going to look as good as broadcasting 720. Um, and if you downscale 1080 into 720, the image is going to look really sharp. Yeah. Really, really Especially sharp. text, by the way. Especially text. Yeah, it sharpens everything up. Because text, you can basically have infinite scaling on like how clean it can look because those pixels are super easy to do. Yeah. What is why you always exactly. see like, oh man, this like e-reader makes things oh it's not even it's fun it looks so good because it's, it's just yeah. that easy to do versus like an actual image which is dynamic and changes um okay so that is settings um we covered the scenes by the way sources so on the second box on the bottom part of your screen you have your sources which so basically if you make a new scene uh which you know i'll even do it as an example so i'm just going to add a scene and it's going to be blank this is yeah. just right, random this scene this would be great this blank be great. This, is this is a blank scene designing your broadcast yep so this is nothing. so now on next to that box with my scenes i have sources so i can right click in sources and i can do things like add let's say i'm going to add my video capture device so this video capture device um only problem is that also this is really slow because it's just I have so much going on. It's going to be take a little bit, but that's why you don't do this while you're live. Ideally, you do this all stuff beforehand. Yeah, uh, this, is, this, is, this is why you don't do it live, guys. I use select. So this is me. Now I'm incredibly huge, and then I can change it. I can edit the scene, and then I can change. Uh, there's a there's a red box around me now, uh, mm -hmm. around the actual source of the capture on the preview screen. If you're previewing it, which by the way I always recommend, if you're adding and changing things. Look at the preview all the yeah. time. Preview is your best friend. Um, so I have this guy now. Chat that don't understand that we just said we were making a new blank scene. Nah, eh, well, <laughs> you know, people are silly. So then, so I have, I now have me. 
I am just me. So now let's say I want to add, uh, is I think it's a window capture. I'm going to add Ben's capture. So window capture, and I'm going to add him, and I'm going to capture him. And oh, look, it's also me too. So I forgot that it's, uh, I had it cut specifically for him. So then uh, you can also, oh, that's a good point too. This is huge. Um, we didn't mention this. For sources, it goes top bottom for what is viewed. So whatever is on your on, on the top of the stack of your sources is what is going to be in the forefront of your stream at all times, period. Unless you have special settings for opacity or chroma key and stuff like that. Um, by the way, look at, dude, look how young we are in that picture. Oh, by the man, way, we're super young. That's like my Facebook picture, my Google picture, something like that. Oh, yeah. um, so what you can do is when you are uh, changing the size of your screens with the red lines when you're editing a scene. So yes, I can make him smaller, bigger, everything. If you hold alt and then click on the red lines and drag, you can actually cut out and crop, which is in my opinion, way nicer. Cause like, I don't want to make Ben smaller. I just want to capture his specific window in here. Yeah. So I just cut out everything around him, and here we are in OBS. And then we have him in the bottom right corner now. Boom, now boom, for boom. Chroma Key, this is also very simple. You right-click your capture, specifically with capture device. Pay go very to attention to everyone that has been asking for so long, how do I do a green screen? So there we go. We have my video yeah, capture yeah, device. We have my, your webcam, my camera. Right-click, properties. And then on the bottom left-hand side of the box that just showed up, uh, you see chroma key. And then you click use chroma key. And then you have a color. I'm going to hit the select button. And it has a little, uh, uh, what's it called? an eyedropper. Eyedropper, thank you. Yeah, like that. So then you go select a color. And it could be anything. I could choose Ben myself. I'm going to choose this green behind me. Click on it in the preview. And then there is three options. Similarity, blend, and spill reduction. They're all pretty uh, self-explanatory. Similarity is it's like, what colors do I get rid of? Uh, what is the color range for the colors to get rid of? So similarity is going to be kind of your first thing you kind of mess with. If you can go without changing anything else and just up some similarity, that's the best option. Then blend is like, all right, you know, you're, you're bleeding a little bit, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of the same as spill reduction. Spill reduction is also going to make you, is that the one that makes you like purple? Yeah, it is. Okay. Look at that. I remembered. Um... But it kind of tries to make the colors more separate. And then blend kind of makes sure that you're, uh, the, the things that are moving around kind of sit really well. I don't know how to describe those really well, but honestly, just play with them. That's the best, yeah, that's the best I mean, advice I can give you. When it comes to chroma key, playing with it is the easiest way for you to figure out what works for you. And sometimes using a color that's not even on your green screen might be a better option sometimes yeah. too. So for example, if I was having a problem, I get select the actual chroma green, which if you're in a preview, it's that green box that's in the bottom right hand corner of OBS, which has your bitrate next to it. That's what I typically use. And then I can crank it up to like, what, 700? Yeah. It's the same thing. It cuts out like just more greens. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's how that works. And it's pretty, exactly. honestly, it's pretty simple. It really isn't that hard. <laughs> um, it just takes getting used to. It's all about OBS. I feel like for sure the best thing I can tell you to do is play around. Um, <laughs> play around. And so you can get play around play. in your preview. Sorry, yeah. I've I've been talking a lot, but, but it's just like no, it's okay. You were setting up the scene. Let's yeah. take us back to the original overlay podcast. Yeah, yep. podcast overlay, and we'll be good to go. And for those who are curious, the way that this is set up, uh, Ben is first in the sources. Then it's me, and then it's the first overlay. Then we have first chat behind that overlay. overlay, and then we have the overlay again. Yeah. Uh, with the first one, well, I forget how I did this. The first one is chroma on white. That's right. So that way it bleeds through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You made it basically built a see-through sandwich for the yep. chat. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, all right. So, uh, so then the next big question or the next big step is all right. So you start real quick, real, sorry, yeah. real quick. Blue is also popular because like a blight, bright fluorescent blue is also an uncommon color you see in clothing. In in eye color, like it's just it's those are safe. Bright fluorescent colors are usually almost always safe because people don't put them in clothing. They don't put them in anything for that matter because for that exact reason. Continue. Sorry. Um. So uh, the next big question is: All right, you design your stream, you've been streaming for a while. You're ready to take the next step and kind of increase your design and your overlay. You basically understand things. 
this is when we're getting to the part that's going to get really technical and we're going to start talking about notifications. So if you're using OBS or XSplit, everything <laughs> that you use to run a notification is essentially a web page. It is a web page that accesses name the API that you care about, your follower API, chat API, sub API, tip API, you know, PayPal, whatever. <clears throat> it grabs that information and it pulls and produces a quick image on another web page. And that is that web page is what you're capturing to display on your stream. So in order to do this on OBS, you have to download a plugin called CLR browser. Uh, a CLR browser is essentially just a way to display. I'll grab the link while you're doing that. Yeah. To display, this will be in chat, uh, to display any uh, any web page you want in any dimension that you want. Um, and so that is kind of the first thing. Uh, CLR browser, installing the plugin is really fitty. Um, I actually, when I upgraded my channel overlay design from version one to version two, my CLR browser shit the bed halfway through it. And I had to have my, de my design guy, Alex, remote into my computer and reinstall it. It was a nightmare. So um, when you're ready to take the step to install CLR browser, it's definitely something that I will tell you, expect it to take four to five hours. If it takes less time, cool. If you did it the first time when you installed it, awesome. But for most people, something's gonna go wrong and you're not gonna know what it is. Um, you have to make sure you excite it in the right folder, installed it in the right folder and subfolder. In the Zipped right it folder. correctly, it's just... Zip it, unzip it correctly, so yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really fitting. But so once you get it, you will have a new option under your scenes and it will say CLR browser. Um, and it'll tell you to input a web page and input dimensions. So that's where we're gonna start. I know that yeah. was a really long road through the woods, but that's where you're at. Yep. Basically, you install something that lets you show a web page, and now you have to create the framing for that web page. Um, on top of that, make sure you're also downloading the correct uh, bit version of the plugin. Yeah. If you're using 32-bit OBS, download 32-bit version of the plugin. If you're using 64-bit OBS, get the 64-bit version of the plugin. Like, do you have the multi-platform? Get the multi-platform. Yeah. It's just, it's very important. It's all discuss, on that page uh, that was listed. Like, you, yeah. read it. It is important. It tells you where to put it and everything and make sure you get the right kind in the right place. Hopefully it works. And we will uh, we will uh, discuss OBS plat OBS standard versus OBS multi-platform and all these other really tiny questions once we kind of walk through all this stuff. So um, there are a few really good places to start if you're trying to build your alerts. Um, where I started and honest to God, probably my uh, my favorite recommendation is Night Dev's alerts. So uh, you can just go to Night Dev. Uh, I think it's nightdev.com. Should be. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yep, nightdev.com. And Night Dev has all sorts of products. Now, the Night, uh, Night is a guy who's been around on Twitch for a really long time. He's authored Better Twitch TV. He is the creator of Stream Tip. Uh, he has a Twitch downloading service called Twitch Down that lets you download like 15 minute VODs. It, he's he's great, great developer. Um, uh, but so he has follower alert, uh, you know, subscriber alert, everything. So let's say you want to build a follower alert. You can go there, you, you know, install the, the thing that you need, and then you can make a nicely framed, you know, follower alert based off of stuff. So uh, my recommendation to you is to, again, go and mess around. It's really simple to get it started and then the customization from there um, is kind of up to you. His uh, walkthroughs while you're doing building whatever you want are really, really, really good. So good. Tells you exactly what it is, what you need to do. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I highly, highly, highly mm -hmm. recommend it. Um, yeah. It's, and, yeah. Yeah, and we're not gonna get into a lot of details here because this is definitely working with CLR browser and learning how to control that environment as a broadcaster, physically learning and going through the process of that, unlike all this other stuff that we showed you, um, is going to make you a better broadcaster. Yeah. Because you're going to understand the limitations of what you're working with and what you can and can't do. Um, so like, let's say you really like your alert system and you set up like the standard alerts, which I always recommend starting with the standard alerts. You know, Night Dev has really nice, clean, simple looking Follow alert, sub alert, donation alert, whatever you want. Um, and then going from there and learning a little bit more about CLR browser and maybe contacting someone from the creative section to design a background for you. Yep. Yeah. 
Because then all you have to do is give them... Essentially what you can do is if you know the the pixel width and height you are working with, you're like, hey, this is what I'm working with, design it, and then you can... Typically also someone has them to downscale it too, so that way it looks nice and clean when it's small. Um, instead of making it small and then blowing it up, it makes it look choppy and gross. Um, yeah. And on top of that, um, I know a question is going to come up. Uh, Prince, I'm going to answer it. Why use this over Twitch alerts? Um... Honestly, it's whatever you want to do. And both are good. The reason why I personally would say use Night Dev instead uh, is because I like notifications better. I think the Twitch alert notifications are silly. It, it, I, I, every time I see, I, 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 I prowl around streams occasionally, ones I've never seen before. Because I'm like, oh, you know, like, for example, Xenoblade came out. And I'm like, fuck, I want to see more Xenoblade because I have a problem and I'm itchy. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And I go into someone's stream, and they have, like, a wobbling follow uh, notification that is in the smack dab middle of their screen that goes off when someone follows. And it's, like, 20 seconds. Like, I hate that. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I leave immediately. I don't watch. I don't. Because it looks obnoxious. So, it's it's also a good balance between how do I give someone the thank you, you know, the screen real estate as, as a... Thank you, I appreciate you. Versus like, burr, 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 my entire stream is like a gimmick. Burr, burr, burr. Like it's 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 so tough because for once again, like last week we talked about this. Yeah, that may fit your personality, and then like, bam, it's spot on. But the default things for Twitch alerts, yeah. I I, I don't believe those. That's yeah. everyone's personality. I would like say the that. walking zombie. That's like you gave me two dollar <laughs> tip for some reason. I'm a walking yeah. zombie. I would say with any alert program, don't like set it up, get it working, and then don't use the default. If you can, you know, like you you can you can use the default. Default's great for testing, but I'd recommend at least looking a little bit for what you what defines you because the last thing you want to do as a broadcaster is have someone tune in and be like, oh, this guy's doing the same thing that everyone else I've ever seen did. That's not what you want. You know, if you are different, it's nice to be able to express it with mm. your overlays if that's what you're going to be doing. Plus, I would say both of our assumptions, you and I, if you are taking the time to set up alerts on your stream, yeah. I am now assuming that you are now willing to make more of an investment. Yeah. So I would agree that uh 100% with that. So, you know, yeah, exactly. Creative section, you have an art friend. Be like, "Hey, can you make me a very simple thank you for following or like just very simple images. They don't have to be animated, not have to be special, but something that's yours." Mm-hmm. Um cuz at this point, I would venture to say if you care this much, you may be looking into eventually one day to get part on Twitch or be part of a larger community, you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah. And at that point, this is a very separate, equally complicated episode. But then you have branding for yeah. your channel and for yeah. you. So I got very lucky <laughs> with mine. Because mine's just dinosaurs. Fucking phone it in. Drex was very lucky because he's he has a dinosaur. Looks looks like yeah, this. Man. I guess I could have just gone with all professors. Dude, no, I mean your new logo looks good, dude. It took a little while to get it, but like I mean it fits exactly yeah. what you um, want. Looks so good. I agree. Yeah. So what I would say is um, definitely, you know, if you're whatever you're using, learn it, explore it. And then after you have your your first experience with it, before you activate it on your stream, you know, I would find something that customizes a little bit to you. Um, And actually, Twitch Alerts has gotten a lot better since I first used it. And I think like, you know, I think my bigger version of Twitch alerts was when I tr- when I first started using it, Twitch alerts was in its infancy and it was super bad. It was not it was not nearly as friendly like I'm, I'm actually in there looking at it right now and it's a lot simpler. So it is. I would say Night Dev or Twitch alerts are probably both really great places for you to start. Uh, Twitch alerts definitely kind of has the tutorials included in, you know, designing your alert, yep. which is pretty great. But again, you want to try and stay away from anything that looks out of the box or gimmicky, in my opinion. Yeah. You, nothing is wrong with flat text. <laughs> you don't have to have the wiggle. And that's, you know. My you opinion. don't have to have the wiggle. You Plus the cool thing. Or the wobble or the spiggity spobble or whatever the hell you want. I would say, um, I would say Night Dev is going to give you a more default, cleaner look 
that isn't going to be intrusive or annoying to people. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, on the other hand, you have, um, what is it? You have Twitch alerts. I lost the word. You have Twitch alerts, which give you a lot more features prospectively. For example, yeah. uh, most recently I got a lot of new things for my stream, one of them being a stack, which is in the top right-hand corner of my stream when I'm streaming. Mm -hmm. That is a that's a feature that Twitch Alerts now has. It has like a recent events um, drop down that you can have for yeah. you, which they didn't have that. Um, not many people do. It's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I love I love mine because mine's custom and I mm -hmm. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. But a lot of those things now are provided, right. which is kind of nice. Yeah. Jealous a little bit. Save yourself some bit. money. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself some money, dude, for real. Um. <clears throat> so. That is kind of a, that is kind of a general rundown of how your software is going to work and the real general questions that we got on uh, on Twitter. <laughs> uh, so, but now, guys, if you want, I realize this is clearly a much it feels so short compared to last week where we talked for like four hours. Um, but if you guys have any questions about software or alerts or whatever. Uh, tweet to me at Professor Broman or T Rex at the T Rex, and we will try and answer some of your questions here on the stream. What uh, are, uh, do you have any of them that are already loaded up? I know you asked beforehand. Uh, I did ask beforehand. Do do do. Um, there's some there's some really specific ones that fall into the realm of troubleshooting, uh, and that's actually a great question. I, uh, let's say I have this X thing and I can't seem to ask any streamer or anyone I know about how to fix it. Oh, if you can't fix your problem, go to the forums and post your problem. Uh, because, uh, at least with OBS and on X Blood, they both have very active, uh, troubleshooting communities, whether it's just community members that like to help or the developers themselves. Yeah. Sometimes the quickest answer you're going to get is going to take a few days, but it will be a fix, and it might be a fix that helps you and actually bug fixes the program that you use. Yeah. Um, so I recommend, yeah, but most of the time, chances are if you're having a problem, someone else has had it, uh, and checking out the forums is either going to get you an answer or put you in a position to get an answer. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if you can't fix your own problem, you're probably going to learn just a lot more of them, to be honest. Yeah, you, you need to learn how to fix your own problems. Okay. okay. Uh, so one of the big questions was, have you tried OBS multi-platform at all? If so, what do you think, uh, what do you think could improve it? Okay. OBS multi-platform is absolutely fantastic. Um, it has much less CPU usage, uh, than OBS traditional. Uh, also multi-platform works on Mac. So if you're trying to stream, and this was another question that came up a lot. I have X MacBook. I have Y. Yeah. You know, I have run a Linux box or whatever multi you know, you're running. You want to use OBS multi-platform. Uh, it's been optimized to a point where, like, when I run OBS on my computer, we're talking about 15% of my CPU. OBS multi-platform is three. Yeah, I would love, I honestly, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish when I first in, talked to them that I had discussed doing multi-platform. Because, like, now that I'm, yeah. now that I've had all those new things, I feel like now my, my OBS is more sluggish than ever. Yeah, it seems exactly. like it's definitely having uh, some load yeah. problems with some the things. The only reason, honestly, that T-Rex and I don't use it is because the graphics are built in WebGL, which is, you know, a certain type of web page. And OBS <laughs> multi-platform doesn't... OBS multi-platform does not display WebGL. Yeah. It just doesn't. But the nice thing about let me, like my situation is how rarely I, I edit things on the fly. If I was constantly having to open up settings menus and stuff like that with OBS, I would be incredibly annoyed all the time because they, they just they lag and it's awful. And it's not my PC. It's just the fact that I'm using uh, a software that is really struggling along, trying probably not to crash because I have so much going on at the same time. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. But it is what it is. Um... So uh, we had a bunch of people ask what the best program for overlays are. We covered that. Oh. Do you think overlays make or break a stream? Um, yes and no. They can break your stream. Yeah, for sure. But again, uh, I don't think that any an overlay is kind of an enhancement of your personality. Yeah. So if you got a, if you got a good personality out there, the only thing you're going to do is enhance it. Um, but you can certainly ruin it, like we mentioned earlier, with with uh, bad choices. 
Love how multi-platform you can change bitrate while streaming huge shell buses or your like hours. You can do that with norm, uh, with normal as well. You can change it with traditional OBS on the fly as well. Yep, that's not just a multi-platform feature. Don't end up on the bad layouts Twitter page. I yep. have L ended up on that a few times, but it was on purpose. Was it, was it when you were doing MS Paint, probably? Yeah, oh, MS Paint or, like, purposefully ruining my layout. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, doing it on purpose. Uh, this is a good thing that I, I personally don't have much of an opinion on, but I think it's it's something I would love to do eventually. Yeah. But uh, Bass brought up, uh, Bassandra, mods. what about um, chat programs? Not like bots, but like uh, chatty or IRC or things like that that... Oh, yeah. Like, honestly, that'd be, I mean, I personally don't use, I know a lot of my moderators, because they're amazing, and I love them to death, use chatty, so that way they can keep logs of things. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's, they always have it going, or this, that, or the other. I know a lot of streams do have that with uh, some moderators, and that's nice, but yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with chat outside of just having chat bots. Uh, there's chat programs that can monitor it for you, you can see it differently. Um, outside of just, for some people, like, better Twitch TV, you know, um, much more than just that. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, I guess we didn't really discuss this, but it's a good point. Point. Uh, which oh, which operating system are you currently using? Seven. Yeah, I use Windows Seven as well. Uh, I don't think that there is an operating system that provides a smoother, bro the smoothest broadcasting experience. Broadcasting and encoding is rough on your computer. It just is, and it doesn't matter uh, which operating system that you're running. Uh, it's going to matter more about the parts inside your computer, which is hardware, which we talked yep. about in week two. Yep for sure. Um, how do I do stream alerts if I stream from a console? Uh, if you are streaming directly from a console, you cannot. Yeah, it's not a feature. It's not a feature. It's very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, how do I use custom graphics or notifications with night dev? Is it a simple upload or something harder? GRX? Uh, so it's pretty simple. When you are using night dev stuff and you're going through the process, let me see if I can see the exact wording so that way I tell you exactly what it says. So we'll do, for example, a follower alert. How about that? Because that's what people like to use. Install next. Okay. In follower alert installation, step three of six on night dev, you have the alert style, and then it has all these options. On the bottom, th the bottom three are use my own. Essentially, you can use your own uh, alert style, which is basically just you choosing a sound mm -hmm. uh, and you choosing the actual image. Yeah, and the image is, is, of course, going to be a specific type of image. You got to make sure you have space for where the text appears, all that kind of stuff. But that's how you do it. It's very simple. Um, it's on the third step of, like, follower alert, is, tip alert, everything. <clears throat> that is across all the different um, alerting systems. If you want to upload your own thing, you pretty much just click the upload button. Yeah. And you'll be able to either preview it on OBS or preview it on the web page right there. Pretty much. It's just yeah. that simple. Uh, when someone followed my channel, I heard the notification sound, but a picture didn't show up as a way to test them. Uh, yeah, you know, usually there's a preview setting. Like with Night Dev, you can put uh, preview equals true at the end uh, of your of your browser code. Or uh, with the other things, you can just ping the server with a fake alert. Uh, yeah. But I would say your problem is probably one I've encountered before, and that's make sure that your follower alert is on the right layer of OBS, a.k.a. on the front. Yeah. Or the highest up instead of on the back. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Let's talk about this one. Do you know how to get a black screen from when your game capture cards to be the actual game instead of the black screen? What? Is that Basically, he's asking HDCP? What, what, when my, what, 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 what's going on when my capture card breaks. Oh, um, it's broken. There are so many different things that can go wrong with your capture card. Uh, T-Rex and I will cover some things that we've had go wrong. Maybe it's one of yours. Uh, so we can kind of go back and forth. I'll, I'll do mine first so T can think. Um, I already have one. <laughs> okay, cool. Because it happens still. One of the things, one of the first things that prevented me from capturing was uh, I was using the PlayStation. I forgot to turn off the, uh, the share protection. Whatever is like HDPC or something. Protection. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which prevents the, it, it detects whether or not you're splitting the signal or capturing the signal, and then it just kills it, so make sure that's turned off. Yep, uh, and that's just a software thing. Go on your PlayStation, yep. kill it. I think I, don't, I think Xbox One has that turned off by default, but I think it has it too. I can't remember if it does or not. Mm -hmm. um, 360 doesn't have it. PS3, you need a splitter, I believe, because you can't turn it off. I can't remember. It's So there's some basic stuff. 
Uh, an issue I have is that sometimes, uh, so I have two of the same capture types of devices, and my peers are like, oh, why is there two of these? They're named the exact same, even though their MAC addresses are different. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, like they have different like hardware IDs and stuff like that. Um, basically, what I do is I unplug and replug one thing. And it's like, oh, there's two of them and they're different. And then it's like, oh, great. But uh, sometimes when I, when I kick it up, my camera seems to always work, but sometimes my game capture uh, is non-existent. It'll just literally not list my device even though it's plugged in and seeing it. And that's typically after I restart my computer every single time. So I just go and back my PC, unplug it, plug it back in. Uh, when it comes to internal cards not working and you're getting a black one, uh, it's probably, like, I hate to tell you, it's probably broken. Like, more than likely, it's probably fried. You can't, yeah. that, that's not a unplug it and plug it back in kind of thing. It's in a specific bus that's, there's only you know, a couple of them. It's not going to be confused about it um, and all that kind of stuff. So there's, not much you can do. Yeah. Um, and, and T-Rex Cover, the other one that I was going to say, is if you have multiple devices that, have the, that are exactly the same, sometimes they'll override each other. Yeah. Depending on how your computer detects them when they're starting up. Mm -hmm. Which is a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. Wish um, I could just name them and it would just know, but nope. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. yeah so let's see. Uh, I see a lot of questions in chat about a lot of things yeah. we've already talked about. If you have a question that is not about software, please, I would recommend going to Ben's YouTube page and watching the other three. Uh, if you see your topic overarching listed, mm -hmm. if it's about uh, a specific piece of hardware, probably in the hardware episode, is it about how to just simply get started? That was our first episode. A lot of stuff like that. So. Yeah. There you go. Can you talk about global sources? Okay. So a global source. They're is, so cool. I wish I had known instead of a year and a half later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so what, um, <laughs> what you're going to have on all your capture devices, you're going to have the ability to, uh, or, or on all your broadcasting software, is to have the ability to set something as a global source. So if you're going to make a lot of scenes, and they're all going to use relative, and you know your camera is going to be on every scene. For the love of God, make your camera a global source. Uh, you know, so that way, if you edit your camera on one scene, it carries over to all of them. Essentially, instead of setting up one source on the scene, you set up a global source that says camera. For me, I have a global source for camera, a global source for follower notifications, and a global source for my notifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is uh, that is. It's always the smartest thing to do. Yep. So the nice thing is, is that they're always running the background. It's why uh, when I switch to my hold screen, it's already running, um, all that kind of thing. So the problem with that, uh, hiccups you can have is essentially maybe too much for your PC to handle, period. Because basically those things are always running. Yeah. So, for example, if you have your capture cards always running, and then your notifiers always running, then potentially you can crash OBS. Maybe it'll crash your PC. Is, so that's that. That's yeah. that's why OBS that's is built the way OBS it is. Standard, not OBS, multi-platform, which makes all sources global from the start. Yeah. Um, Confusing. Which <laughs> I don't know. It's it's real. It's real tough. So basically, once again, just keep feeling out what you use, what you want. Um, all that kind of stuff. Honestly, so for example, if I didn't have global sources, you would see this every time. It would have to... Uh, oh, it's, it's a global source. Never mind. So let me restart it. Um, I have to do it a specific way. So it would be a black screen, and it loads all the assets. You would see that every time I switch to it versus just the simple in and then back out. So mm -hmm. it looks way cleaner. Yeah. And that's global sources. Um, what else? Uh, someone wants to know, uh, are you always looking for better software to improve your stream? Once it's, or once it's good, don't screw with it. Um, I'd say once it's good, carefully consider screwing with it. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be like, I'm going to make all these changes today. Cause then you don't know what breaks it. Cause it will break. It always breaks. Um, you don't know what's going to mess it up, but I would say definitely consider what you're going to change because I know too many changes can cause everything to die. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is like an actual fade in, fade out without the uh, without a black screen stuff like that. It's kind of like that, yeah, because it's just transitioning and loading it in. And yes, that screen is hosted by a website. Do you do you want to talk about our custom stuff at all? 
um, our custom stuff. Yeah. Uh, so if you're if you go beyond out of the box, uh, you know you can. Well, I mean, what do we want to talk about? It. I don't know. Just, like so, for oh, example, T Rex and I have have alert systems that are designed. Uh, they're not out of the box. They're designed custom for both of us. Yeah. Um, there are people out there who who do that, and it is it is not an inexpensive endeavor, but it does kind of give you your channel a one of a kind look. Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's definitely something to consider heavily before you do it because it is a big investment. Um, and also, then this is the other thing: is it locks you in. Mm -hmm. um, when you're using the Twitch alerts or when you're using Night Dev or whatever, you can change it up as much as you want because it's out of the box and you can have fun with it and all this other stuff. But if you pay someone to design your channel, you're going to want to at least feel like you've gotten the effective use out of all of your alerts before you start changing things again. Yeah. That's very important. Or when you talk to them, you ask for a couple things that are modular on your end. Like, yeah. um, I can easily edit sounds, um, which is yeah. pretty cool for any type of alert I want. Uh, tips, subs, all that kind of stuff. Um, I could even do sub trains if I wanted to, but I just I didn't. I never have been a big fan of that, so I don't use. I, I like my stack instead. So, yeah. essentially, if you have someone who, uh, I, I know there's some people out there who are just really. Uh, coding savvy. So if you have someone who can design something for you, mm -hmm. and you have someone who's code savvy, who understands API and stuff like that, potentially you can also get it pretty expensively too. But if you want it professionally done, expect to uh, get what you pay for. For one, I am incredibly, I feel like I've gotten something that is amazing and I love it. Um, and I don't plan on changing it for a very, very, very long time. Or potentially never. <laughs> potentially I may do like little tweaks here and there with the same company, but I don't plan on changing it. Yeah. Um, which brings back to branding is, is I love the color scheme. I love my logo. I love everything about it. I may add new features or maybe I'm like, Oh, can I have a holiday themed this or that? But you know, short of that, I'm done. I, I, I feel like you and I both are getting very close to plateauing on, yeah. on the hardware and software side of things like hardware at this point, I would need a much bigger space to do anything else with my hardware. Like, uh -huh. I would need a studio to be like, all right, I want to have, you know, better lights, uh, a better mixer and stuff like that. Like, I would need more space. So, mm -hmm. stuff like that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I've seen a couple of good ones. Uh, you're setting up. I want to do a video conference stream. Would you recommend Skype or Zoom? I'd recommend Zoom. It's what we use, and it's much more stable than Skype. Yeah. Uh, plus, I feel like image is actually now cleaner now that we're looking at it. People are bigger. Um, yeah. Plus, I don't know. You never want to have names up on screen from Skype. Yeah, that, Skype that, was, that was actually a question uh, I saw on Twitter was how do you prevent that? Uh, step one, uninstall Skype. Step yeah. two, never install Skype again. Yeah, um, Skype, is, Skype is a massive backdoor on your computer. We're going to talk about safety and security Yeah. Uh, in a future broadcast. We were going to talk about that today, but I forgot we were going to cover software. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the short version is you can set up Skype through a proxy server, but even then, I mean, I don't know. I just don't feel safe using it. I have literally uninstalled Skype. There is a web app I occasionally use to contact a couple people, and I check in like once a week when I'm not streaming, so that way no one can be like, oh, where's T-Rex? I'm going to find him. Like, cause I, I had a very rough Halloween because someone was like, his, his my, it's my favorite part, favorite part. Mm -hmm. He wanted to help me, guys. Oh, yeah, he wanted to help you. He wanted to help me unsafe. to cover, because I was being unsafe. So he, he was, he was, uh, so he, he was taking down my stream. Yeah, it's very silly. So dumb. Um, and then he, and then he asked for money. You so. stressing. How do you relieve that stress? Is it safe to switch to GPU usage? You can use your GPU to encode your stream. NVEC. It will cause problems. Yeah. Uh, damn, Zoom's $500 a year. You can use it for free. T-Rex uses the free version. I have one that I pay $15 a month for, so we can do the multi-person stream. Oh. Um, yeah, so like basically... Yeah. Speaking of which, we do have Andy next week, so that will be fun. both experimented with using the NVIDIA. Uh, to do the encode, and it actually caused some really weird feed issues. I think it screwed up the keyframe heading to Twitch. To yeah, I would agree because I feel like it was uh, it would stutter um, for no reason, like literally no reason. There would be stuttering. There'd be no FPS loss on my end. It was something about how it was being encoded and sent, and that was the only thing I changed. And I changed it back, and then it went away. So that was annoying. 
Um, but then again, every machine's different. It might work for you. You're welcome to try it um, if you need to. Uh, Delta Army, this is the software portion. That is not a question for today's topic. <laughs> how do sponsors work with streaming and how do you get them? Uh, we will be covering that next week. Well, part of that will be covering developer. I would say I would say that would be under that one. And I mean, far, far, far in the future, we will cover monetization and how that works. Just because people have a morbid curiosity about all that stuff. Man, that's gonna be kind a, of like wanting to know why a dead body is laying in the street. Like you or there's a, the likelihood of you, and it's I mean it's just real talk. We talked about it this week. The likelihood of you making it on Twitch or YouTube or any entertainment based medium on the internet is very small. But it doesn't mean that we won't talk. about yeah. Um, so there is that. Scar uh, Scar Scar there was one more really good question in chat uh, that I saw, and it was good. Um, <laughs> is the way you stream better one? than using a, can a console? Yes. Um, yeah. So the, I guess the last real kind of big question that might come up is you're streaming from a console. You, of course, have your innate console abilities. But clearly, based off all the stuff that we talked about, being able to stream through a streaming dedicated software is going to give you a lot more utility and versatility. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to do a lot more things, push a higher quality image, and uh, and kind of put on a better show by using different software. Using oh, uh, using Twitter with my Twitch channel is what a lot of streamers recommend. Can you get a bot that tweets out when you're live? Uh, no, but you can link Twitter to your Twitch account. It'll do it for you. Yep, you can connect them. It'll literally tweet out your exact title with a link and then a hashtag and a number after it. Every single time you go live. I don't use that because if you have if you have uh, internet problems and it keeps cutting in and out, it'll keep sending tweets. Uh, so I just copy and paste whenever I start and I send out my own tweets. I do it myself just because it's easier. Well, I wouldn't say it's easier, but I would say it's, uh, it's safer, quote unquote. Because I don't have to worry about... Um, Twitch screwing up and sending out 50 tweets saying I'm live, because that'd be really obnoxious. <sighs> if that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, I've, I've seen a few questions, but what about using X or, Y's, uh, X or Y hardware manufacturers proprietary software to stream? Don't. Yeah. My argument is that El Elgato, Abermedia, whatever, there's a whole lot of, they have these software built in to stream from, but the support structure behind all that is so weak right now that I wouldn't recommend using it at this moment in time. Uh, there's also a lot of question about chatbots. I guess they fall into uh, guess, yeah. software. Um, basically, if you don't know, you can have a bot in your chat that'll do things like take care of folks that spam and caps or remind people where your Twitter's at every time. Um, uh, a few bots that you might see around Twitch, uh, you might see Zanbot, you might see Moobot, and you might see Nightbot. Uh, I use Nightbot. Uh, <clears throat> The basically, in order to set up Nightbot, you go to nightbot.tv, you, you log in using your Twitch account, and you say, join my channel. Yep. And, and, then you, mod and you mod it so you can do crazy things. And, and you're set. Yeah. That's it. Uh, using chatbots are not really that difficult. Uh, everything on a chatbot is really obvious and accessible from the front page of it. Yeah. Like, like on your dashboard, it'll tell you, like, I want this, I want this, I want it to shout this out or say this or whatever. Um, that is definitely something that is uh, a go to the web page, check it out, and learn for yourself sort of situation. What about software like DeepBot? DeepBot, I guess, is good if you want to do a lot of... Uh, it's good if you run a lot of raffles and if yeah. you have a space loyalty system. I honestly don't know of one that works better and is more open than DeepBot is. Yep. Uh, so if you're looking at using a chatbot to control that kind of stuff, DeepBot is definitely the way to go. Yep. Plus, they're gonna be named kind of whatever you want to. So, mm -hmm. um, but I don't like those things, so I don't use it. Yeah, exactly. I Again, just guys, not, if you have any more thought. questions, make sure to tweet them at the T Rex or at Professor Broman. What about Wobblerbot? Wobblerbot is our team bot, and that's it actually uh, needs to explode of, in a fire. <laughs> he's been breaking a lot lately, but he's kind of unique. The whole point of Wobblerbot was to set it up so that we could have our channels be technically always live, so everyone on our team. Uh, the bot would auto detect who was online, select someone, and then detect all offline channels and have them host one of the online channels with like a ranking system algorithm and all this other stuff. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. But Wobbler Bot was designed by Ancient Priest, and uh, it does break occasionally. 
Onk bots like that too. There are so many chat bots at this point, guys. Yeah, guys. There's like no way we can mention all of them. Yeah, find one that works. Use it. You don't like it? Stop using it. Simple exactly. as that. It's pretty simple. What would you recommend it's... for soundboard software? Don't use soundboard software. That. That's going to cause a lot of a potential variable audio delay. You want a hard sound sound mixer. That's what you want. Yep. <laughs> For sure. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, it, once again, the moral of the story of the entirety of this episode is is play around. Find something you like, but I would highly recommend not doing something that looks uh, silly. I don't know. To a degree of like, some people think like, oh, the louder it is, quote unquote, like visually or this, that or the other, like the more people are going to show up. I, I feel the exact opposite. The less intrusive it is, I feel like the better it is, in my opinion. I, I've, I've worked uh, extensively with the folks that have made my stuff, and I tried to make it to where it fit my stream, but didn't feel like it was the, the centerfold of my stream. I would like my stream to always be about, you know, myself and the gameplay, and not about um, saying thank you all the time, which that sounds like an asshole thing to say, but, you know, uh, if I say thank you to everyone, or if I have all these things on the screen, then am I really streaming anymore? Kind of, the, kind of the question. Like, is this even like entertaining? You know, because that, that's what I want to do. I want to be here every day as long as I can to put on a good show. And I hope that you know everyone else can kind of mirror that to a degree. Not like myself, but you know that that mentality of I want to put on a good show. I want to have things that will improve the quality of the show without becoming the focal point. If that makes sense. And that's always been kind of a thing for me. Then again, you can do whatever you want. So. Who cares? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I ain't your dad. I I ain't your dad. Yeah, man. <laughs> Never use Whitwix as an example. He's a special, special case. He is, dude. He can special get away case. with anything, man. But it Which isn't bad. I mean, it just fits him. An except I mean, he always gets brought up when we do these things. He is both an exception and the proof of the rule. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. he's not really an exception. He is that person. That's why it works. It's if so weird. Are, if you yeah. are the person that using default, when we talked about this last week, default Comic Sans doge face that takes up half your screen for every follower and your fucking community digs it, do it. You know what I mean? But I can't do that shit. <laughs> you know, everybody is different. Everybody is different. I feel like we covered everything for the first time ever. Yeah. On the on the, the like, there's not a lot of tweets that we haven't already gone over. I'm sure people will be like, "Well, what about this?" And then, well, what about our, this? Yeah, well, I'm um, sure our response is being, "That was a different episode." That was a different or... episode so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, same with Brotato, right? Well, no, no. The rule of Brotato is don't be Rotato. That was that was what we established last week. Is just don't ever be Brotato, and you're set. <laughs> Kappa. Oh my gosh. Um, music. Okay, I guess we can cover that. Music oh, yeah. That's that's again. that's. Software that's, broadcasting. Yeah, display now playing uh, software and things like that. Sure, that's actually a great way to go out because a lot of people have that question. Yeah. Um, what about stream background and music? What are the rules? How do you set it up? Sorry for Ricardo this. Um, so if you're using a streaming software, it's automatically detecting all of your desktop audio. So if you want to play music, you play music on your desktop in your headphones. It gets heard on stream. What are the rules? Uh, your VODs will get muted. What are mm -hmm. VODs, T-Rex? They are uh, videos on demand of basically things that you have done. Uh, so basically, by default, your broadcast will be storing your broadcast you have done uh, up to 60 days? 60? Uh, yeah. So, and then they'll be deleted. It used to be forever. Now, they have a timer on them. Uh, so if you want to highlight something, you can even highlight the entire broadcast and save it. Uh, but if you want to do something with it, you can do it 60 days or it's gone. Um, and when what it's muted, you, you can appeal the mute. Um, so let's say you got permission to use uh, music from freaking uh, Weird Al Yankovic okay. somehow. You know, I don't know. So if your VOD gets muted, but you're like, I have permission, written explicit consent to use yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you can appeal it and you can give it to Twitch saying, this is, I, this is okay then they can take the, the mute off and you're fine. Um, 60 days for turbo. Oh, there you go. So I've always been turbo. Um, I did not know that. That's actually quite interesting. Yeah. Get turbo nerds. Um, 
now for what to use to overlay and show it. Uh, before I got my custom stuff, I, I, I've always, I've used Spotify for literally for years. Mm -hmm. Weirdly enough, it's the only Facebook ad I've ever clicked. And it's the one I have actually kept. So good job, Spotify. You did your ad <laughs> campaigns right. Um, but I've had premium for years. Mm -hmm. um, I use a program called Snip. Just Google it. Just Google Snip for Spotify, for OBS, or for broadcast. Like It's very easy to find. Simple to set up. Snip it, is the program. Yep. And basically, you can select what software you're using to capture. It puts it in a text file dump. And all you do is basically set up an image. Sorry, a uh, what's, what's the exact source type? I think it's text. So that text mm -hmm. that reads from that file and it gets updated all the time and then you can have it be scrolling, whatever it is. Yep. Uh, or alternatively, if you're really, really smart and savvy, uh, you can attach Spotify to Last FM and then you can have um, something pull it from, you can, I think it's squ squabble, squirbling, squabbling, strobbling, uh, whatever the fuck, I don't even know. Uh, and it can pull the intro from there. Um, but I highly doubt. You know, that kind of stuff. You're not allowed to use music unless you have written consent. Uh, unless it's copyright free music, you True. will have the, the video. Area. Yeah, it it's is a gray, gray area. area. Uh, what, what about what? song requests? Same thing. Uh, you can set up your chat bot and link it with your account for Last FM or your account with Spotify, people, or YouTube, and it'll grab and play the songs for you. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to think. But yeah, I mean, you you are allowed to stream it, whatever music you want. Honestly, um, biggest thing is you can't it can't be listened to later. So basically, you can use it kind of like a radio show, to where it's like you know kind of play whatever we want, but you know you can't like save it and then listen to it later because then that's essentially like pirating to a degree. I don't know. It's it's a weird. It's just a really weird, as you said, gray area. That's a gray area. Yeah, it is a very gray area. Basically, l laws have not figured out where this about. lands <laughs> about all of the legal fun stuff yeah which that'd be fun too <laughs> legal things the snip work with apple music uh let me check i don't use snip anymore it's but i can a check huge list of things that it uh is. it uses it uses so snip version 5.1.0 spotify itunes winamp foobar 2000 and vlc are the the five things i see as listed as things you can do and then, uh, yeah, you can change the output file format, uh, have it be empty, there's no try playing. Like, there's a lot of features you can do for Snip, which I use, all that kind of stuff. Heard the songs on your stream are too loud, you can have your stream muted, but how do you feel if it's too loud? Or how do you tell? I have no idea. Honestly, if you are kind of worried about your stream being muted and you want to play music, that's... Uh, I personally feel like it's a rule, and if you're getting around it, then you're lucky, but that shouldn't be your goal, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, if you want to play music, then accept the consequences. Don't try to skirt it. End of that exactly. discussion. Exactly, exactly. Simple as that. That's true. <laughs> well, all right, guys. That was the that was the very matter of fact and not super emotional coverage of streaming <laughs> software. software. It is not sexy at all, but now it is done. So uh, thank you guys for watching today. Um, and if you like this, make sure to subscribe when it ends up on iTunes to the Streaming 101 podcast. You can also check it out on YouTube. Yep. Um, but for now, uh, I am Professor Broman, and you can find me at twitch.tv slash Professor Broman or at Professor Broman on Twitter. I am T-Rex. You can find me at the T-Rex on Twitter or twitch.tv slash T-Rex, T-E-A-W-R-E-X. And we will see you next week for our episode on developer relations, which I guess we can kind of awesome. talk a little bit about, you know, maybe sponsors or just basically that's kind of like a mini itty bitty networking yeah. episode, too. We can talk about, you know, like meeting it's, it's people a, and yeah. stuff like that. Networking, how to work with, get in contact with mm -hmm. and respectfully develop a relationship. Ooh, yeah, that's a huge thing. And how, and how to <gasps> Ooh, I want to see if Andy can talk about how to write an email. Oh man. oh, man. Andy could talk yeah. for hours. Right? But uh, we're going to have Andy from a company called Sandbox Strategies. He is a good friend of ours. He's fantastic. Um, and we'll have Great him guy. next week. You'll all love him. I'm sure he's probably fancier than both either Ben or I. So, mm -hmm. you know, he'll be here. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. See you guys next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>